My dear friends in Christ, my name is Father Greg Merkley, and I'd like to thank Father Jeff Faring for the great privilege of celebrating this Mass with you this evening. Today we begin our novena in honor of St. Anne, the beloved mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary and grandmother of our Lord Jesus Christ. A novena, usually a nine-day period of prayer, is a powerful tradition in our Catholic faith. It allows us to come together in prayer, petitioning for God's grace and the intercession of the saints in heaven for our lives. St. Anne, known for her patience and trust in God, is a fitting patron for our prayers and intentions during this time. What are you praying for during this novena? I encourage you to be very, very clear in your mind and in your heart about exactly what you are asking for from God through St. Anne. And then trust in God to answer with his never-failing care according to his merciful will. Our readings today from Isaiah and Matthew Invite us to reflect on trust and hope in the Lord. We might feel, based on problems in the world, in the church, in our lives, a challenge to hope and trust in the Lord. But Isaiah speaks of a longing for God, for God's justice and righteousness, while Matthew recounts these most comforting words of Jesus. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. Is that not perhaps each of us in our own way? And I will give you rest. These passages remind us of the peace and rest that comes from placing our trust in God, much like St. Anne did throughout her life. I think, in fact, we could scarcely imagine any more hope-filled and encouraging words to begin a novena with than these words of Jesus. I'd like to read them again. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. It's that Christ is urging us to come to him, to be transparent and honest with him about whatever it is we want. In fact, several times in the scriptures he asks, what do you want? And it makes him happy when he sees us coming to him through his wonderful grandmother, St. Anne. Recently, Father Jeff Ehring and I were in the car together with two other priests. Father Jeff was driving. It was a very smooth ride. And as we were driving... One priest read out loud about the little way of trust and love of St. Therese of Lisieux. She's also known as the Little Flower. As a doctor of the church, St. Therese is well known for teaching us to trust in God and his care for us, as little children do, trusting their parents to care for them. And we are all called to trust like that, childlike trust in God's care for us. Our prayer tonight is an expression of that trust and an exercise of that trust. As we embark on this novena, again, I encourage each of you to be very clear and firm in your intentions, the petitions that you make. Pray with confidence, great confidence, supernatural confidence, because you are a child of the Most High. Trust that God not only hears your petitions with love, but loves to hear them. Trust in St. Anne's intercession, knowing that she will present your needs, you can be sure, to her beloved grandson, Jesus. Remember that God always answers our prayers in the way that is best for us, sometimes by giving us precisely, exactly what we asked for, and sometimes by providing something even greater that we didn't ask for, even when we don't realize it at the time. 
I myself have heard many stories about the favors that St. Anne has granted. God has given her great power. A priest friend of mine told me the story about how his grandfather met his wife, making a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Anne in Quebec. And, well, because of that intercession of St. Anne, he would come to be born, eventually a priest. And countless souls throughout the world have made this very novena for centuries and obtained tremendous favors. For God loves to honor those who honor him and his saints with devotion. And here at this St. Anne's this year, we are continuing a venerable tradition of this annual novena which has incredibly taken place here every year since 1906, when this parish was originally founded. And as we celebrate this 100th anniversary of this current church building, the second church building at this location, we are united with many thousands of souls who have made this tradition, this novena before us, even here in this sacred space. Now, one might say to themselves, Father, why should I come every night to this novena in person? I mean, can't I just pray at home? Isn't that just as effective? Well, praying anywhere and everywhere, including at home, is always effective, always wonderful. And yet nothing can compare to the body of Christ that I so blessedly see before me gathering together in Jesus' name. For Jesus himself promises, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And he is truly present in our midst in a mighty way. Saint Anne, also special, the way that she is with us through this relic. Someone might say, Father, why do we have relics of saints? Well, as you probably know, in the Old Testament, the bones of Elijah could raise people from the dead. Now, Elijah was an incredible prophet, but he was an Old Testament prophet. We are in the New Testament now with even greater grace and even greater power. And we have not just the bones of a prophet, but we have a relic of God incarnate's grandmother. Stop and think about the power that lay there. Wow. If an Old Testament relic could raise from the dead... What can St. Anne do for you? And our gathering together mutually enlivens our prayer, strengthens it, and makes it more pleasing to our God, who takes tremendous delight in seeing us come together just as we are. St. John Vianney, patron of priests, also said that liturgical prayer is like taking many pieces of wood and making a bright pillar of fire, shining, burning up towards heaven as opposed to the smaller individual flames that each piece of wood can provide on its own. That's to show that our gathering together makes our prayer stronger. We gather as a large fire of faith, hope, and love. It shoots up to heaven, and it passes through the heart of Mother Mary and good Saint Anne, who bring our petitions to the God of love. Again, he rejoices to see us together. And so it makes our in-person presence even more powerful. That's why we come as we are. But let us also remember that Mass is not only a time for petition. It is the sacred action of Christ's own sacrifice on Calvary made present, where we adore praise, worship God, surrendering our whole lives and all our concerns to him every time we come to this source and summit of our faith. We offer our gratitude right now for the countless blessings that he has already bestowed on us. Think back all God has given you. He's given you life, faith, love, so much more. 
And we can thank Him already with expectant faith in what He is about to do through this novena for us. Often as we fall asleep each night, let us count our blessings, reflecting on the lessons that God has taught us that day. And in this way, we will grow more deeply in the way of trust and love for God, which St. Anne lived so well. So as we pray this novena together, let us remember to pray for each other's petitions. Let us pray for Father Jeff Ehring, Father Bob Bobrook, and all who have helped organize this beautiful time of devotion. Let us pray for all our petitions and all others joining in this novena here and worldwide. Let us pray for our bishops, the Pope, all clergy and all families, that we may all stay close to God, doing His will, serving Him and one another. May this novena be a time of powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit, of a deepening of God's grace in our souls, and a personal renewal as we await God to come through for us in our petitions through St. Anne. St. Anne, pray for us.